students, this is Dr. Nita Raj, your chemistry mentor, welcoming you for another session in chemical bonding. Okay? So today we are going to see some of the factors that are affecting ionic bond or the electrovalent bond, right? So the first factor that is affecting the ionic bond or the co is the ionization energy. Okay? So what is ionization energy or ionization enthalpy of an electropositive atom? Actually, it is the energy needed to remove the outermost electron present in the valence shell. Right? So, it is the energy needed to remove an electron from an atom. See, this is an atom and these are the valence electrons. That is the electrons present in the outermost orbit. So, it is the energy. What is ionization energy? It is the energy required to remove the outermost electron that is present in the atom. Okay? Actually, lesser this ionization energy of the electropositive atom, greater will be its tendency to form a cation. See here, if whenever an atom is releasing an electron, it will be uh, forming, uh, it will be gaining a positive charge and it forms a cation. Okay. See here, this is an atom. When it is releasing an electron, it forms a cation. That is, when it is releasing an electron, when it loses an electron, it forms a cation. Okay. So, lesser the ionization energy, more greater will be the tendency of this atom to release an electron and it forms the positive uh, ion that is a cation. So, and more easily it forms the ionic bond. Okay, and more easily this cation will be forming an ionic bond. Okay, so metals having low values of ionization energy possess a greater tendency to form ionic bonds. Okay, so for example, alkali metals and alkaline earth metals they have low values of ionization energy and they will be having a greater tendency to form the ionic bonds. Okay, so what are the alkali metals? Sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. Okay. Next important factor that affects the ionic bond or the covalent bond is the electron affinity. Okay, so what is electron affinity? And the electron affinity of an atom is the amount of energy released when an electron is added to a gaseous atom. See, when an electron is added to a gaseous atom, some amount of energy will be released. Okay, that energy is called as electron affinity. You can understand? When, so, what is the difference between electron affinity and ionization energy? Electron affinity is the amount of energy released when an electron is added okay, to an atom. Whereas ionization energy is the amount of energy required to release an electron. Okay, to release an electron from an atom or to remove an electron from the valence shell of an atom. So that's the difference between ionization energy and electron affinity. Okay. So here an electron is added to a, a gaseous atom that is chlorine atom, and this chlorine atom is getting converted to an ion after getting uh, an electron. So, while for, or during the formation of this chloride ion, some amount of energy will be released. Okay, some amount of energy will be released, and that is called as electron affinity. Okay, so how this electron affinity affects the uh, ionic bond or the electrovalent bond? That's the thing we are going to see. Okay, see here, higher the value of electron affinity of a atom, greater the ease of formation of an anion from it. Okay. So, when an anion will be formed, when an anion, what is an anion? The negatively charged ion is called as an anion. Okay. So, what is an anion? It is a negatively charged ion is called as an anion. When an anion will be formed, when an electron is added to an atom. So, when, uh, how this electron affinity is affected? Higher the value of electron affinity of the atom, greater the ease of formation of the anion. Mean, higher the amount of energy released during the uh, attachment of an electron to an atom, greater will be the ease of formation of an anion. Can you understand? If more amount of energy is released, greater will be, greater ease will be the formation of the anion. That's the meaning. Okay. So, yeah. Next we shall see how the difference in electronegativities affect the uh, formation of the ionic bond. Okay. Difference in electronegativities. So, before going to this uh, point, we should know what is electronegativity. Actually, electronegativity is nothing but it is the a tendency of an atom to attract an uh, electron. See, it is the tendency of an atom to attract electrons towards itself. Okay, So, it is the tendency. What is the electronegativity? It is the tendency of an atom to attract the electrons towards itself. Okay, So, how the difference in electronegativity? See, the, an electropositive and electronegative atoms involved in the formation of an Ionic bond should have large difference in electronegativity. See here, hydrogen and chlorine. These two atoms they have large difference in electronegativity. Okay, how the difference should be? 
higher the difference in electronegativity of the atoms, greater will be the ease of formation of ionic bond. Okay. So, at least the difference should be 2 or more is necessary for the formation of an ionic bond. So, the electronegativity difference between the two atoms should be at least 2 or more than 2. Only then the formation of ionic bond will be easier. Okay. For example, See, when, here, when you are taking the atom sodium and when you are taking the atom chlorine, the sodium is having, okay, sodium in A. Sodium is having 0.9, okay, whereas chlorine is having, chlorine is having the electronegativity value 3, okay. Since the difference between them is 2, okay, so the difference is more than 2, they form ionic bond easily, okay. This forms ionic bond easily, can you understand? So, higher the difference in the electronegativity of the two atoms, greater will be the formation of the ionic bond. See here, this atom is attracting uh, the electrons towards itself with grace. That's why the difference in electronegativity is very important for the formation of ionic bond. Understood? Next important factor is the lattice energy. What is lattice energy? It is the energy released when number of uh, cations and anions are condensed to form a crystal. Okay? When number of cations and anions are condensing to form a crystal, some amount of energy will be released. That energy is called as lattice energy. Okay. Higher the lattice energy, greater will be the ease of formation of a compound and more stable will be the compound. Okay. See, if a higher amount of lattice energy is released when number of cations and anions are linked together to form or condensed together to form an ionic compound, then that formation of compound will be easily done. And the compound will be more stable. Okay, the compound will be more stable. The magnitude, see here, this magnitude of this lattice energy depends upon uh, two factors. One is the size of the ion. Okay, and next one is the charge of the ion. Okay, if the size of the atom is very small, greater will be the lattice energy. If lattice energy is greater, then greater will be the ease of formation of the compound, ionic compound. Okay, and next charge on the ion. Higher the charge on the ion, greater will be the lattice energy. Okay. So, if the size of the atom is less and if the charge is greater, then higher will be the lattice energy and greater ease will be the formation of the ionic compound and more stable will be the compound. Can you understand? So, the magnitude of this lattice energy depends upon the size of the atom and the charge on the ion. Can you understand? The next one is the number of valence electrons. What do you mean the valence electron? It is the number of electrons that are present in the outermost orbit. Okay. So, the number of electrons present in the outermost shell is called as the valence electron. Okay. So, how it should be? Okay. How the number of valence electrons it should be? See, for an electron positive element, it should have 1, 2 or 3 valence electrons. At least, see, the electro, for, for an electro positive element, at least it should have 1, 2 or 3 valence electrons in its outermost shell. And for an electronegative element, it should have at least 5 or 6 or 7 valence electrons. Okay. At least it should have 5 or 6 or 7 valence electrons. Okay. The element to be electropositive, it should be from A to A and And the atom should be electropositive or metallic in nature. Okay. So, for an ionic bond to form, the element should be from 1A or 2A or 3A. And that particular element should be electropositive or metallic in nature. Okay. And the second category is the next element. Okay. The next element uh, should be, that is the element which is attracting or which is accepting the electrons from the uh, previous one. Okay. The form of one. It should have at least it should have at least five, six, seven uh, valence electrons, and it should be from five A, six A, and seven A, and it should be non-metallic or electronegative in nature. It should be non-metallic or electronegative in nature. And the previous one should be metallic or electropositive in nature. Only these two types of elements can combine together to form the ionic bond. 
can you understand so the number of valence electrons also plays a vital role in forming the ionic compound or the electronic compound or ionic bond or electrovalent bond well fine students i hope you might have understood what i have taught today let me meet you with another important topic in my next session until then it's dr anitra jr chemistry mentor signing off from you thanks for watching